welcome to another fast tip. This is Chad and Josh. Hi. We're going to talk about a, a basic FPV setup and, and the exact things that you need and to get started because it yeah. can be quite confusing yeah. until you know. For your first FPV setup, get in everything, you know, your camera, your receiver, your transmitter, and the wire loom that's already pre-soldered for you. Hobby King has a great affordable setup. Mm -hmm. uh, reason being is cameras are different voltages. You got some cameras 12 volts, some cameras 5 volts. If you start piecing everything out, there's a possibility that you're going to have to number one, make your own wire harness. Right. And then you may get the voltages wrong. Just it's better to start with something that you know will work. So today we're going to start with we've we've been through probably at least 10 20 of these I don't know They're how awesome. many so you have the receiver this is what receives your video signal and I'm gonna assemble this as we go yep. through it there's your antenna okay so you put your antenna on it yep boom okay you have this is your audio video cable yep. for the receiver the yellow goes into the video the white goes into the audio this goes into your monitor yep. okay now, uh, this is important. Always make sure you have your antenna on properly before you ever put power to your uh, video transmitter. Very good point. Yeah, you don't want to power up your video transmitter without an antenna load yeah. on it. If because... David Vindestol is here, he'd explain, but long story short, the, the antenna is a resistor. Right. right. So, and it, and it requires that resistance to operate properly. Yeah, so, it. you get an antenna also for your transmitter, so pull off the little red yeah. protector. And don't go too crazy tightening too much, because it is actually, the, the ground is soldered to the outside of the cable. If you really torque on a thing, you can possibly break the solder joint. Right. And that's bad too. Okay, now you see little dip switches here. That's to switch the channel. Depending on the country that you live in, certain channels are legal, certain ones aren't. For guys in America, zero is where you want to be. I that's think that's the legal one in the US, yes. Yeah. Okay, then you have, this is your your cable. This right here is worth a lot to a lot of people yeah. because some systems come and they don't have this pre-wired and you ha they come with something like this which this system comes with also. This is a little wire harness to yeah. do a custom camera setup. Yeah. So if you're gonna create a custom connector for your GoPro camera or something like yeah. that, that's what this harness is for. But for now, we're gonna set that aside because we're not using yeah. the GoPro camera. So this one, you'll see there's three ends here. One is your power. Yep, which okay. is the red and black. Right, this goes to the transmitter. Yes and this goes to the camera. And you'll see a common theme here. You have the red, black, and the white. The white is actually your video feed, so everything is gonna have some form of power, unless you're using a GoPro, but that's later on down the line. Um, but your, your white line is your video feed, your red is your power, your black is your ground. So this is your uh, pre-wired harness. Yep. And what you're saying is, on this particular harness, from this particular package, yeah. white, on this harness is video. Yeah. Don't get confused because the white on the custom the harness is for harness is for the sound, the yes. audio. Yeah. The yellow is for the video on the custom harness. Anytime your harness is running to your camera, if you don't have four wires, you only have three, the red and the black will always be your power and ground, and then whatever's left over is gonna be your video. Right, black should always be ground, and red should always be hot. Or someone's really screwing around with the wires. Right, okay, so on your transmitter, you're gonna see like I mentioned before, the yellow on the transmitter is the video. So when we plug in this wire harness, you're going to see the white actually goes to the yellow because they don't have a yellow wire on this harness. So it might be a little confusing, yeah. but just trust us. Well, that's the best way to follow it, too. Look at your, your tra video transmitter, and you can really find out because the video transmitter almost always do sound as well, too. Right. So find the yellow, trace the yellow back. Now, all these wires don't do you any good unless you have a camera. Yes. Okay. That's a nice little camera. Right. Now, but the camera does not have audio. There's no microphone on it, so that's why we're not using the white wire on the transmitter. It's yeah. only video. And it also has a really narrow lens. Yes. Okay, so the little camera. This is actually a great little camera. works great in low light. It yeah. just it works great. Well, and since it's cheap, you can put it on flying wings right. that you run into trampolines. And, and there is a weakness to this camera, and that is this lens. The lens it comes with is junk. It's plastic and it's a narrow field of view and I can't fly with it. No. So so I, I'm going to show you. We're going to hook it up first Okay. and show you how everything works. Now this is right out of the box. The only thing we did is remove the bubble wrap. I'm plugging in the camera. It's just this right here. The camera is then plugged into the video transmitter and then this is an additional item that does not come. You need some type of 12 volt battery. Mm -hmm. So we have a little 500 three cell. Uh, 12 volt battery and I'm going to plug it in to the wire harness here and if you look at the screen behind me you'll see the video image there's our camera guy Dave Knopp. Hi, hi Dave, Dave. 
<laughs> so, um, so that's what it looks like right out of the box. Now this is a widescreen and this is only a, a 4-3 ratio on the camera's native signal. Um, now we are not using the transmitter out of the box. I already had one hooked up just for the sake of time. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's that. Now what I want to show you is the lens. You don't want this stock lens with it, so no. what are we going to do? We're going to use this one. And that's from Hobby King too. Right? Yeah, you can get, well, I don't know if this one is, but you can get them from Hobby King. Yeah. It's like a 2.1 millimeter. It's an ultra wide angle, and you can see it's glass, and it's a much nicer lens. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is there's a tiny little set screw on the side of this camera. So we're going to loosen that set screw. Then the, the lens just unscrews, and if you look here, as I'm unscrewing it, it's going out of focus because uh, tightening or loosening this lens will actually focus or defocus the camera. So you want to have it hooked up when you're doing this so you can see what you're doing. So if you look inside there, you'll see a, a CCD. Um, this is the new lens. You just simply screw it in. Be careful, you don't cross-thread it. Make sure it's screwed in straight or, or that you thread it in straight. Good tip for that too is if you actually reverse thread it to the point where it drops down into the threads, then you can twist it forward. Right. If you if you threads. go backwards on your threading, what you'll feel is a little like you'll a feel a little hop or yeah. And and that tells you your threads are ready to catch. So then go forward. Now take the lens cap off and you have to watch your monitor as you're screwing it in. And now you'll see everything come into focus. Now make sure that when you're focusing, you're focusing on the distance because you're not going to be flying with anything close to it. So you want your focus to be far away. So pick a far away object. Right. So Josh is not far away. The other end of the basement is. So just yeah. focus it the best way you can. It's better to go a little bit past, right? Yeah, I think so. Or just, yeah, as sharp as you can. And then once you're there, hold it with your finger and tighten that little screw back down. We, we spent an extra $10 on, a, on an extra little lens yeah. to improve this kit. So you have the kit, and then you have the $10 lens, and you have a battery, which is what, five, seven dollars, mm -hmm. something like that. And then there's a couple more pieces. For your ground station, you're gonna use a, a battery or a 12 volt power supply. We got this from an old hard drive. Mm -hmm. And I made an adapter for the battery to plug in. So now you can run it wirelessly, you don't have to plug it into an outlet, and you can just plug into that, and there's your receiver, and it's powered. Okay, so just to recap, you get the receiver and transmitter, the wire harness, the camera. There is no power, power supply. Power your transmitter. No, nope. or your uh, transmitter or receiver. Either. Yep. Yeah. So that's the one thing I want to caution everybody because a lot of times they buy this kit and then they don't know how to power it up. Yeah. So really, the dollar amount here, you're probably you can get away with about seventy-five dollars if you have a monitor. The monitor is obviously going to be the most expensive piece. Yeah. And the really great thing is once you get everything set up, you can get into uh, more customized antennas. Yeah. Um, we won't go into that right now. Everything builds off of itself. So you right. can get this system and then you can add your OSD and, and all those different components later as you get more money and more time. Your diversity, your eagle tree, all those things can come as you get more comfortable flying. But it's best to start cheap and simple and then go more advanced as you go on because that information you get, you're going to build on. So it's not going to all change and, and all the rules are going to change. This information here, as far as video wires, ground wires, power wires, is always going to stay the same. You always just want to keep in mind whenever you do start going out, make sure if you buy a new camera, it's not a 5 volt, it's a 12 volt and things like that. But that knowledge that you gain now will help you in the future. One thing I wanted to show is these little backpacks that we make for our experiments. Very simple. Yeah, we just cut it out of foam, a little piece of Velcro on the bottom. We still zip tie it or Velcro it down. Yeah. Um, but these are great, and what we do is we make a, a little custom connector out of a balance connector mm -hmm. to be able to plug into the balance port of a battery, and that way you can run on the same battery. If yeah. you're running a 3S on your plane, you can run the same battery. It keeps the whole system very lean. And another important thing, too, is these video transmitters get hot. You can see, like on our backpack here, you, you still want it to be able to get airflow. Yeah. Because if it gets too hot, what's going to happen? You're going to lose your video. Well, we'll accompany this video with um, some diagrams so you guys can see how we hook this up and maybe some additional resources. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to answer some questions so people knew uh, what to expect on an FPV system. Very simple setup. Yeah. And I, I hope it helped. A little bit longer than normal fast tip, but right. it's a less than fast tip.